Hello and welcome to lab study guide number four of the bones. So we are going to be covering bones in some detail and we're going to start off with this lecture. Um, so let's kind of get first get an overview of where we're going and then we'll uh, look specifically at uh, what this lecture is going to be about because there'll be several uh, more lectures uh, much more, many more lectures than we typically have in the lab because we're covering a lot of material. So let's begin. So information that's going to be covered in these series of lectures is going to be bone structure, the axial skeletal system, and the appendicular skeletal system. So basically what we're covering uh, in today's lecture is this first part, bone structure. And then the following lectures will be covering the axial skeletal system. We'll break that down into several lectures and then the appendicular skeletal system, and we'll also break that one down into several lectures. So um, basically what you're going to have to know uh, for the lab exam is the structure of bone as we cover it today in today's uh, lecture, and then identification. And identification includes the names of bones and various landmarks on those bones. So we'll go through those in a very regular and orderly fashion and be able to get through all of that in a way that will be helpful to you. So identify and name the structures of and, a gross, uh, and the gross anatomy of a long bone. We'll cover that in today's lecture. Identify bones as either long, short, flat, irregular, sesamoid, or sutural. We'll also cover this in today's lecture. Describe the difference between compact bone and spongy bone. Yes, we will do that. And then identify the microscopic structures of compact bone. We will also do that. And that is where we'll end in today's lecture. We'll cover those questions uh, or those areas in today's lecture. So let's go ahead and begin. And if you are have your study guide with you, and by the way, if you haven't downloaded all of the various handouts that um, are associated with this lab, you should uh, put me on hold now and go back into Canvas and download all of them um, and have them handy. We will not be using all of them today in today's lecture, but we will over the course of the lectures that are going to follow. We do have a couple of handouts that you need to know, including the lab study guide. So the lab study guide, so we're going to, first of all, we're going to cover these, uh, this portion of the lab, so the types of bones. Uh, and I'll explain that uh, in just a bit. Then we'll also look at some of the gross features of a long bone. So we've got, I've got a long list of things here, um, and that includes the following page, as you can see um, here. So we'll go through and identify all these things. And obviously, you could start taking notes in each of these categories. Uh, and we will also, by the way, um, be identifying all those structures on this. So this is the first handout that you should have in front of you. We will be going through and identifying all those structures that we just looked at in that list on this, um, on this, uh, on this handout. So this is uh, the long bone, OK? Um, and then we'll continue with the um, structures of the osteon, um, and, and that will be it, really. So let's go through and begin, uh, and we'll start identifying these names for bones. Long bone, let's go in and see this a little bit more. So long bone, short bone, flat bone, irregular bone, sutural bone, assessmoid bone. So when we look at the skeletal system, obviously it's composed of many, many different bones. And, and one of the things that we want to do in order to understand how it's put together and its functionality is try to organize these bones into some um, groupings that make sense. And one of those ways we can do that is through this methodology here. So this is based on how the bones look. And so we'll start off with long bones. What are long bones? Well, long bones are defined as a bone that is longer than it is wide. Longer than it is wide. So if we look at this image right here, there's a very good example. It's the humerus. This bone is longer than it is wide. 
So, and there are many bones in the body that follow this pattern. So we have some here, we have another one here, all these bones right here, uh, the bones in the lower arm, those are pretty obvious. But let's take a look at some other examples. I do have some bones here. I snatched them before the school closed down. So let's take a look. And I'm gonna try to see how this, so there you go, that stands out fairly good. All right, so this is an example of a long bone. It happens to be the radius. It's one of the bones in the lower arm, and you can see it's longer than it is wide. Okay? So more examples. Um, look at this. Here's the hand. And as you can see, the hand has a whole series of long bones here. This would be the palm of your hand. These would be your digits. And even though this looks short, it is considered to be a long bone. It's longer than it is wide. So all of these bones fit into that pattern. We also see that same pattern in the foot. So we've got long bones, long bones, and long bones. So, okay, so longer than wide, that's a long bone. What about short bones? Well, short bones are just the opposite. They're shorter than they are long. And let's take a look at an image and see where they're going with that. So a short bone is a bone which is wider than it is long, just the opposite of a long bone. And the example they're using are the bones in the wrist, so we'll use those as well. And we'll also look at some bones down here that fit that description, so short bones. They are wider than long. And as I mentioned, the textbook was using the bones in the wrist, and so all of these bones that you see here, and there are a total of eight, all of these are considered to be short bones. So this makes up your wrist here, okay? Those are short bones. Also, we've got bones in the foot that are also considered to be short bones. So all of these bones here and this bone and this bone, all of those are considered to be short bones. Now, some of these bones, clearly you're gonna have to use a little bit of imagination, but you get the idea they are wider than they are long, okay? So, and this is the heel of your, and this is where the leg attaches to the foot, this. We'll be, looking, we'll be learning the names of all these bones here once we get into identification, okay? So those are short bones. Well, what about flat bones? Well, flat bones are a little bit more difficult to identify. Well, not really. They're, well, let's first of all take a look at their example. So here is an example. It's the sternum. This is considered to be a flat bone. But also all the bones in the skull are also to considered to be flat bones. Even though they have curvature, they are considered to be flat bones. So how do you reconcile the fact that a bone like the bones in the skull or even the ribs, which are also considered to be flat bones, how do you reconcile the fact that they had this curvature and some of them quite dramatic curvatures um, how do you rec uh, reconcile that with the idea of a flat bone? Um, and the terminology is very clear. It's f supposed to be flat. Well, in actuality, what they're talking about, and let me draw an image to get this idea in place. In actuality, what they're talking about is where you have a plate of compact bone and then a space typically a very small space of, of, of um, spongy bone, and then another plate of compact bone. So this would be compact bone here. This would be also compact bone here. And in between is spongy bone. So compact. bone and compact bone. So we have this sandwich-like structure. We have the sandwich-like structure in a flat bone. And I, if you take this and bend it into a curve, you still have this pattern. Two parallel plates 
of compact bone separated by a thin layer of spongy bone. So I could simply take this idea and I can just create a curve out of it. So I would still have the same basic concept. I would still have a thin plate of compact bone separating um, separating uh, two plates of, of compact bone, I should say, separated by spongy bone. I still the pattern is still is there. But I just put some curvature to it. So flat bones. And that's how we can say the skull bones are flat bones because they have that pattern. They have a very um, two thin plates of compact bone separated by a very a small amount of spongy bone. So that is a flat bone. All right. So we talked about we've talked about long bones, we talked about short bones, we talked about flat bones. Those all sort of seem to make sense to us. But then we get in this category of irregular bone. What is an irregular bone? Well, irregular bones are just what they sound like. They don't have a a good way to describe them. And I like to think of irregular bones as like that drawer, it's just typically in the kitchen that you have. You open it up and there's all kinds of stuff in there. There's rubber bands, there's nuts, there's bolts, there's pieces of this, pieces of that. There's, it's just the drawer that you put things in that you don't know where they go. They just are all pieces of this, that, and the other thing. And they're not, they're not a knife, they're not a spoon. They're just a variety of different things. And that's what we have with irregular bones. So let's take a look at some examples of these. And I've got here, this is a vertebrae. And you can see that it's, that would be very, very difficult to describe. It's certainly not a long bone. It's not a flat bone. And it is not a short bone. It's some, something else. It's irregular in its shape. Here's another example. This is also vertebrae. This is actual real human bone here. This is a plastic model. This one is plastic. This one is actual from an actual human being. Um, and then here's another example again. Um, so all of these have these unusual, hard to describe shapes, and all of those fit into the category of irregular bones. Okay. All right, so what's next? Well, if you're looking at your list, you'll see that we have two different types of bones, sutural bones and sesamoid bones. Let's go back to the textbook picture and we'll deal with the last one, sesamoid bone. And here we have two, all of us have two examples of sesamoid bones. These would be the so-called kneecap or the knee bone um, it is actually called the patella, that's its actual name. And it's a small, irregular shaped bone, and it fits between or within a tendon that's crossing a joint, typically. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. We have the joint, the knee joint. We have a tendon from the, up, the uh, muscles up here in the thigh that are crossing that joint and inserting on this bone here, the tibia. And in that tendon, we find this bone the sesamoid bone. And that bone is designed to protect that tendon as you bend your knee. So that as you bend your knee, you're not scraping or rubbing constantly against the connective tissue, that dense irregular connective tissue. In fact, what you're doing is you're using the bone as a surface in that knee, protecting the ligament, or excuse me, the tendon as it crosses that joint. Um, there, those are two that all of us should have. Um, unless you've damaged your knee or uh, something unusual has happened to you. So we all have two of these hesmoid bones, but occasionally we can have more than one. Do you have more than one? I have no idea. It depends on individuals. There is a lot of variation, but typically you're going to find some here. So this is the foot. This is the bottom of the foot. This is the plantar surface of the foot. 
And you can see I've tapped two little bones right here because there's a fairly large tendon here that's crossing uh, into the big toe. So that's my big toe there. And these sometimes show up here in this location. And um, they can show up in other locations as well. Typically, like I said, in the foot, sometimes in the wrist. It just depends. You may not have these. You may have them. The only way you're going to tell if somebody takes an x-ray and they actually find them. We, all, we always have those two, the two patellas, but occasionally individuals have more than those and we find them in spots where a tendon is crossing a joint and that joint is protect, or that tendon is protecting the tendon as it crosses that joint, okay? All right, so that's the sesamoid bone and there's one other type of bone that we need to talk about. And as you can see, it's listed here and that's a sutural bone. Now, sutural bones are also variable in the population. So you may have them, you may not. Um, typically, where you're going to see them showing up is in the back of the skull here. So this is the posterior aspect of the skull. So we're looking at behind somebody. This is the occipital bone. And typically, the occipital bone would form a single bone all the way up here and pr produce this U-shaped suture between this bone, the occipital bone, and the two parietal bones, as you can see. But occasionally, people end up having some small bones in here. So instead of these bones becoming part of this larger bone, they remain separated, and they end up as smaller bones in this suture. These are quite large. I've seen them this large on various skulls, but they don't have to be this large. They become quite small, as a matter of fact. So do you have them? I have no idea. The only way that we're gonna know is if we actually go in and look through x-rays or some other technology and see whether or not you have these small sutural bones. It's a variation in the population. Does that mean if you have them, your skull is weaker than someone else that doesn't? I don't think so. Um, but it's just like I say, a variation that we see in the population. So those are sutural bones. Okay. All right. Well, let's start and take a look at the anatomy or the gross features, if you will, of a long bone. So a long bone, which happens to be most of the bones that we find in the body. Um, we're going to look at the structure, the anatomy, and the parts of that long bone. Okay, and we're going to um, identify a number of, of parts to that bone. Okay. So if we have, here we go. So if we take a look at the list, we have the ends of the bones, uh, epi ep epiphysis, excuse me, epiphysis, that's how that word is pronounced, epiphysis. Um, so we have proximal and distal epiphysis. We have uh, metataphys, uh, metataphys uh, and we also have the diaphysis. So let's take a look at the structure. So this is your textbook. Look at that bone. Um, so we have the proximal Epiphysis, epiphysis here. We have the uh, metataphys here, and then we have di diaphysis. So we have three sections. We break this bone into three sections. Um, the, this part, the metaphysis, is difficult to see from the outside. So if we go down to this end, but you know, it's a, it's it's a little bit difficult to know where that is. There's no strong landmarks to indicate where that is. Um, the ends are clear and the long shaft is clear, but the, the part in between is not always clear. If you open up the boat, bone, you sometimes see a structure here, and this is called the epiphyseal line, and that can tell you, if you're opening up the bone, where that is, um, but it's hard to tell from the outside. So it's just in between the, the end, the distal end, or the uh, proximal end and the shaft of the bone. So why don't we do this? Um, you should have in front of you a drawing, and let me find that drawing here. 
and we'll start to fill in the names of the structures and identify um, what they are. So, these are getting confused here. I just had that right there in front of me. Of course, now it's lost, right? And that sucks. All right, I'm gonna use a smaller one. That's okay, you'll have a larger one. We can do the same thing, no big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll start just to fill in the structures, name them and talk a little bit about them as we do so. Let's start at the very top and divide this bone into its different uh, regions. So we're gonna do something approximately right here. Okay, that area right here, and that is the ep epiphysis. This would actually be the proximal. Let's write it out here. Epiphysis. Okay. Okay. Then we have the center region here. And that would be the metaphysis. And then we have some from approximately here to here. The diaphysis. And then here at the end, we're going to have the distal epiphysis. And in the center region, we'll have the metaphysis. So those are the regions of the bone. At the ends of the bones, and we'll indicate this with the blue line here, okay, and all of this surface right here, we're gonna have cartilage. And that cartilage is gonna be called articular cartilage. And down here at this end, same thing. Particular cartilage. What type of cartilage is that? Highland cartilage. in both cases. We'll talk more about its purpose as we get into identifying bones. Okay. We have this line right here, which we'll highlight in orange. That structure right there. And that's called the epiphyseal line. Now, as we get into talking about how bones grow, we will come back to this idea of the epiphyseal line because that's where bone growth and length is going to occur. And we'll talk about that process in the lecture. We also have spongy bone. And we have compact bone.
We'll take a look at those in just a bit. Okay. We also have a space, which we'll do in yellow here. This is hollow cavity inside that bone. And that's the medullary cavity. Starting to run out of space. And inside the uh, medullary cavity, we find yellow bone marrow. Okay. In fact, in spongy bone, we find red bone marrow. If you look carefully, and I'll try to highlight this right here, there's a little fold, and they've kind of peeled it away from the inside like that. And what that is is called the endosteum, and it is a layer of tissue that sits uh, lining the interior medullary cavity, the wall of the interior medullary cavity. That's called the end osteum. And we'll talk about that because that's an, another important feature of bone and how bone grows. You also see, we see the same thing here on the outside, sort of a peeling away of a thin layer. And that's the, um, and that structure is the periosteum. And we'll also take a closer look at that too, the periosteum. Okay. Then we have a very large blood vessel, as you can see, coming out. Well, fairly large. One of the larger ones in what we find in bone right here. Okay. And that, and I've totally run out of space. Uh, that one is called the nutrient artery. And the nutrient artery is found within an opening or comes, exits the bone through an opening called the nutrient foramen. All right, let's come back to the image from the textbook. And review all of this that we've just identified in this drawing. here. Right. Proximal epiphysis. This is the distal end. Proximal, because this is the proximal end of that bone. And then the metaphysis. And here we could also label that the proximal metaphysis. Then the di diaphysis, which is the long shaft part of the bone. And then we have the distal metaphysis and the distal um, epiphysis, all of the regions within the bone. We have our articulator, articular cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage, at both ends of the bone. We have red bone marrow found in spongy bone. So spongy bone contains red bone marrow. We have the epiphyseal line, we have compact bone. Then we have the medullary cavity, which contains yellow bone marrow. We have the end osteum. And as you can see, it's a layer that sits on top of the bone tissue inside the medullary cavity. And then we have an outer covering, which is called the periosteum. 
And then finally, we have our nutrient artery. And the hole that it's passing through is called the nutrient foramen. The nutrient foramen. Okay. So that's your typical structure for a long bone. We're going to cover this again in lecture because it's an important part of understanding how uh, bones are put together and how we're going to grow bones when we need to grow bones. Okay. All right. So the next thing that we're going to cover then is the osteon. We're going to take a look at the osteon and identify different parts to the osteon. And what I would like to do um, is, first of all, um, go through and identify using the textbook image, the structures on here. Then I have a little PowerPoint presentation, which, by the way, is available on Canvas. You can download that and have the same PowerPoint presentation in your own home. But let's take a look at what the textbook is showing us. So the osteon is part of the structure. It's the functional structure uh, or the, um, the functional unit of compact bone. And the osteon is a structure that, in this case, you can see they've raised it up so you can see it. A series of concentric lamellae, in the center of which is a opening called the central canal, where we find blood vessels. And then if you look carefully here, there are tiny little spaces, which they've shown and enlarged here, that contain the osteocyte. So we have these canaliculi, which is connecting these cells together. So as you can see, let's get in here a little bit closer perhaps. So we can see that cells are being connected together through these little tiny canals called canaliculi. So here's an osteon, there's an osteon, and we're connecting them together. So these cells, which are closest to the source of nutrients, can pick up those nutrients, pass them on through a series of connections, from one cell to the other. And then these cells out here, as they produce waste, they pass them back and back and back, and then finally it's taken away here. So this is the basic structure of the osteon. And we'll take a look at that, and then we'll come back here at the very end and fill in the information here. But let's go ahead and see if I can do this seamlessly and go into my PowerPoint presentation. And let's bring that up. And let's do slideshow and start from the beginning. All right. So what I've done here is I have brought together um, the image from the textbook that we were just looking at. And let me go ahead and get this. Uh, yeah, laser. So we're going to do this, the osteon, and this is what we're looking at. So this structure, it's not perfectly round. And they're not going to be perfectly round. But you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, perhaps six layers of lamellae that surround this central opening right here, which is the central canal. Okay, And then I have these little canaliculi, which you can see here in this image right there. And then I have the, um, the uh, lacuna, which is housing these cells. Let me go in here. And let me go ahead and do the highlighter. So we have the canaliculi. We have the osteon. We have the lacunae. Oh, excuse me, we have the osteon here. This is the osteocyte. So all those structures are seen. The lacunae right here. The canaliculi are these structures right there. Um, the osteon is this whole thing, okay, here. And then this is my central canal right there. Okay. And you can see how it's all put together. Okay. This is your first introduction, so you're just getting used to this, but um, we're going to see this again and again as we go through uh, the material in the lecture. Um, a couple other things. Notice we have the periosteum here. We'll be talking about that, so we can see that here. Also, we have spongy bone out here and compact bone. This is all compact bone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a couple of images, and we're going to look at compact bone and spongy bone. So 
I can do this. Let's see. Next slide. There we go. So here is a view of several osteons. I have an osteon here. I have an osteon here. I've got one here. I've got central canals in each of these. Notice they're all slightly different in size. That's okay. okay so there's my osteons. Um, and the way I like to think about this is when I look at this, I see a, 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 a forest in which the trees have all been cut down, and all I'm looking down at is the stumps, so to speak. And go away. There you go. All right. Next one. So this is compact bone, and this is all spongy bone. Compact bone has the osteons. Spongy bone does not have the osteons. So what it does have are these structures right here. These are called trabeculae. And you can see that it's a very complex network of uh, bone tissue creating a, um, a lattice work uh, within the bone. And the spaces that you see here that's all filled with red bone marrow. And finally, we can see that they're labeled, that's trabeculae there, and there's one there. So again, all of this is trabeculae, and the spaces in between is going to be red bone marrow, okay? So let's see if I can get out of this. Can I do this? I think I can do this. Uh, end show, yay, no, discard. All right, so let me go back to this. And let's go ahead and very quickly go through and identify in our image those very same structures. Okay. And we're going to I'm going to help ourselves here. We're going to do that a little bit stronger so I can see that, okay? So that's my osteon. And I'm just going to I guess I'll just put That's my osteon. Okay, I have this structure right here, which is my central canal. I have this structure right here, and I'll just go ahead and highlight that in pink so we can see it. That space right there. Is our lacuna. And then let's get some orange going here. These things that I'm highlighting in orange, those are the canaliculi. And finally, as you can see, I have a series of lamellae, circular patterns of bone tissue surrounding the central canal, and that's the concentric lamellae. So let's just do this here to here, and we'll identify that as the concentric lamellae, or lamella. And that does it for the introduction to bone tissue. And the next uh, lecture, we're going to start looking at actual bones, identifying them, naming them, looking at the landmarks, identifying what those landmarks are. And um, we'll just go through all the bones and doing the same thing, uh, naming the bones, finding landmarks on them, and very importantly, knowing what those landmarks are there for. What's happening? Why do we have this structure uh, whether it's a flat surface or whatever it might be. Let me just show you an example of what I'm talking about. So here is a vertebrae. This happens to be a lumbar vertebrae. And there's a lot of structures on here. So you would name this bone, and then you would have to name various structures that are found on that bone. And that's where we're going next. We'll take it one area at a time, very slowly. We'll have a chance to really look at that. Um, you'll have a series of uh, papers in front of you where you can mark down and take your notes. Um, and then uh, on the website on Canvas, 
I will have practice exams. I've included some of the practice exams in the um, in Canvas as well that you could uh, do at home. But I will also um, without Canvas. But I'll also have some things available on Canvas, like I did with the tissues, so you can practice identification and naming things. So I'll see you again uh, as we get further into this material. And stay safe.